Let's learn in this video how to deploy pods, deployments, and services into a Kubernetes cluster using Terraform. So we'll be using the Kubernetes provider for Terraform. With this provider, we'll be able to authenticate and authorize into a Kubernetes cluster. Even that cluster is airbag enabled and even that cluster is connected or secured by an Azure Active Directory thanks to using the Cube Login extension plugin within the uh, provider. But with this provider, we won't be able to deploy the YAML manifest native Kubernetes files into the cluster, but instead we'll be creating those on Kubernetes objects, I mean the pods, the deployments, and the services using the HCL or the Terraform language, and then we'll, Terraform, we'll deploy those resources as part of the Terraform template. In this demonstration, we'll use Terraform to deploy the entire stack. So first we'll go to deploy the AKS cluster, that cluster will be secured through Azure Airbag and through Azure Active Directory. We want to deploy also the Kubernetes manifest files like the pod, the deployment, the service, and a namespace using Terraform. So for that, we'll be using the Terraform provider for Kubernetes. But because our cluster is secure, so we need to authenticate to our cluster. And for that, we'll be leveraging another tool, which is kubelogin. So kube login, that's the new way to log in to any Kubernetes cluster. And because this is an AKS cluster, so we can use either a service principle or a managed identity to log in. So we'll combine both features, kube login with the command get token using the credentials from that service principle will get access to that control plane. So Terraform here will deploy to my AKS cluster as being that SPN, using that SPN identity. And for that SPN to be able to deploy, so it needs the right access roles. So we'll add it actually to the Azure Active Directory group that will be used or that will be created using Terraform provider for Azure Active Directory. And then you, that group will be the AKS admin for that cluster. So let's see how this works. Into here, I have the sample Terraform configuration files. So the aks.tf, this one will go to create a resource group and then create an Azure AKS service inside that resource group. So this is a typical AKS cluster with a default node pool using the system pool and then with a system assigned identity. And then here, the important part is that this cluster is secure with Azure Airbag enabled. So it have also an Azure Active Directory group that will be used as the administrators for that group. And of course, here we are creating that Active Directory inside the file service principle.tf. So here I'm creating a service principle that will be used by Terraform to deploy to my cluster. Uh, and then here I'm creating the Azure Active Directory admin group. And to that group, I'm adding to the owners the SPN that I've created earlier. And I'm also adding myself uh, to that uh, group to be a member of that uh, AKS admin. I'll put here the link for the documentation for Azure AD provider and uh, for uh, Terraform which is inside this link right here, or we can create a service principle and Azure Active Directory groups and so on. So we'll be using credentials from this service principle and its password inside the providers to be able to log into the AKS cluster uh, and that will be used by the Kubernetes provider. So here, when configuring the Kubernetes provider, we provide the host and the CA certificate, and then we'll be using the exec plugin available as a feature in Terraform to use the cube login feature. So here we are issuing the command cube login get token, and then we are providing here the client ID coming from my service principle and also the secret password for that SPN along with the tenant ID. And then we are saying here to log in with SPN. So that will take the service principle from the SPN that I've created in this Terraform template. Note here, we have server ID, we have a reference for another service uh, uh, principle that will be used always to uh, as the AAD server ID for AKS. 
So this is actually a static ID for the service app ID for AKS, which have this value uh, right here. But but because I don't want to put static data like that, I have referenced it, it, it into my data.tf file, where here I'm creating a data to reference that uh, service principle for the Azure Kubernetes service uh, IAD uh, server. And then when I get that reference, I'll be able to get that application ID. So that's actually an SPN that is, as I said, static. So if I issue here the command az ad sp uh, show dash dash id, then that uh, id of that SPN or its uh, display name, I'll get here this uh, SPN uh, from here where I get the display name and its uh, id. And more interestingly, the application id, which have this value here. So the provider here will wait until the AKS cluster will be created because here it, it references that AKS cluster directly and then it will issue this exact command in order to get the token that will enable this provider to authenticate and authorize to my AKS cluster. Then it will be able to deploy the Kubernetes manifest files described as Terraform files. So let's start with the sample, the first one here, which will go to create a pod. So this is creation of a pod in Kubernetes. So here we have the object Kubernetes pod v1. Uh, let's say here we want to create an Nginx pod. We'll give it a name and we'll give it a namespace. And note here, I'm referencing a namespace that I've created. We'll show, we'll see it later. And then we have the spec for that pod. So it will have an, a container, it will have a name for that container, that's the nginx 121.6, and then it will have an environment variables, let's say environment is test, and then it will be exposed on a per number 80, it will have uh, liveness probes uh, redirecting to the path 80, and then HTTP header and some other uh, properties. And for the namespace, so here uh, it's on objective type Kubernetes namespace v1. Uh, it will have, of course, a name that is a variable referenced within my terraform.tf uh, vars right here. And then it will have also some other properties like uh, annotations and labels. We can also create lots of other uh, objects like a deployment. So that's what I'm creating here and a Kubernetes object of type deployment that will go to create an Nginx deployment with uh, specific labels and then with some specific replica and with some uh, uh, selectors. And then the properties that we know from Kub a Kub a typical Kubernetes uh, 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 deployment file, like the image, the resource limits and resource requests, the liveness probes, and so on. And then I can also create a service. That's one of the most objects used in Kubernetes. So that the service will point or will redirect the traffic into a labels or in two pods that have some specific labels. So this service with the name frontend SVC that will live inside the same namespace as my pod and my deployment object that will route the traffic of type load balancer. It means it will expose publicly that service uh, using a load balancer. So, so that will go to create a public IP and then it will route the traffic to the uh, spec with selector tier equal the uh, name of my deployment tier uh, label. So all of these objects and more are, of course, documented inside the Terraform official website for the Kubernetes provider, which will show us right here the different uh, objects that we can use uh, within Kubernetes to create uh, resources using Terraform. Note here some other objects, interesting objects, like for using the network policies, the airbag, the scheduling, the storage, and many more. So in my demo today, I'm showing you how to connect and deploy objects into a secure Kubernetes cluster using airbag. But of course, note that if your cluster for any reason is not secured with airbag and Azure Active Directory, which is, by the way, a good practice, um, I mean, a good practice to secure it, not not to secure it. So uh, here you have a sample uh, a configuration for the provider to connect to that non-secure cluster using the certificate, client certificate key and so on. And uh, along also you can, what you can do also is to reference the cluster itself and get those client certificate, client key and the CA certificate. Now let's see this configuration working. So first of all, I st I've started with Terraform init to download the, the three providers, which are 
the Azure RM, the Azure Active Directory, and then the Azure or the Kubernetes provider for, for Terraform. Then I've created the plan using the command Terraform plan dash out uh, plan, and that will show me all the resources that will be created like the SPN, the Azure Active Directory admin group, and then the AKS cluster and the different uh, resources, including also the YAML uh, manifest files for, uh, for Kubernetes. So at the end, that will go to create 10 resources in my uh, Azure subscription. Once deployed, I can show a simple overview using this command, which is by the way on my GitHub repo that I'll share at the end of this video. Uh, here we can get the, um, the resources that will be created and we get here the verb for each resource. So all of these will be uh, created. And then once we uh, launch the command terraform apply tf plan that we go to deploy the uh, previous resources mentioned inside the uh, plan. So you see here the service were created, the pods, the AKS cluster, and also the SPM, the admin, and so on. So we can we can uh, check those created resources. So in my Azure subscription portal, if I go to view the AKS cluster that was was created by Terraform, I can see here my AKS cluster created successfully. And then when I go to cluster configuration, I can see that here I have the Azure admin ID groups that is configured with the admin group that I've created for this AKS. And of course here I can add or remove this uh, group by uh, this uh, link right here if I'm the admin of the subscription. So note here we have configured it with the group AKS TF admins, which have this ID 8AB, which is by the way, an Azure Active Directory group created within my Azure Active Directory tenant. So here it is, my group. If I go here to Azure Active Directory, you can see in all the groups, the group created for Terraform. And if I click on that group, I will see the ID of that group, which is 8AB. And then I can see I have here actually two members, two members on that group. If I go to members, So yeah, I can see myself and I also can see the service principle that I've assigned inside this Active Directory group to be able to get the right authentication and authorization to deploy the Kubernetes objects into my IKS cluster. And once these resources are created successfully, I can go to uh, the AKS cluster to workloads, and then I can go to here to see filter on the namespace. So select the front end app namespace that we have created as part of Terraform. And here I can see the deployment object. And if I switch to pods, I'll be able to see the uh, pod coming from that front end app namespace, which is the Nginx pod, and with the other three pods coming from the deployment object. And you can recheck that same information if I go to the use the Azure CLI. So I uh, list the AKS clusters and they can see the cluster that were created with Terraform. And then I go to download the cube login for that uh, cluster using the command az AKS get credentials. And then I log in as myself, as the current user using the Azure CLI, uh, using the command cube login convert cube config. And then I can get the different uh, uh, objects inside my cluster. So if I type uh, cube control get nodes, for example, I get the uh, node in my cluster. And then if I go here to use cube control get all dash uh, from the namespace front end app namespace, I can see here the deployments. I can see here the deployments created as part of my uh, deployment or the pods created as part of the deployment and the single Nginx uh, uh, pod running, the service for the front end and the deployment objects. Note that here this uh, configuration used for this Kubernetes provider is almost the same used for the Elm provider for Kubernetes. We know that many uh, organization teams like using Elm charts, so they can reuse that same exec plugin in their Elm charts. I mean this one provided inside the uh, Kubernetes uh, provider. It could be the same one used in Elm charts. I'll be creating a new video for that, so stay tuned.
And yes, of course, uh, I should not forget to say this. So uh, the Terraform configuration files that we have seen today, you know, with the scripts that uh, I've used are available on this uh, GitHub repository where you will find all the files and the description and the commands that uh, I've used in this demonstration. I hope you like it. Thank you.